want to make Azure Virtual Desktop easier to manage? There's a new feature called Session Host Configuration, and when it's paired with Managed Identities, it changes everything. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. Session Host Configuration automates how AVD creates and manages session hosts based on settings we define when building a host pool. But here's the catch, AVD needs access to other Azure resources to make that happen. That's where managed identities come in. And in this video, I'll show you how to use them with session host configuration. Before we dive in, hit like, subscribe, and share with a friend. It really helps this channel grow. And if you're looking for more Azure training, check out my courses on udemy.com, including a beginner's guide to the AZ900. Links are below. And a big thanks to all my channel members for your support. So what's the deal with session host configuration? Instead of creating a fixed number of session hosts when we create a host pool, we define the configuration and let Azure handle the rest. That means AVD can add or remove session hosts automatically, even replace them in pooled environments. It's more dynamic than just turning VMs on and off. To do that, AVD needs permissions, like creating a VM, pulling images, and grabbing key vault secrets for the local admin account. In the past, we gave those rights to the AVD service principle. Now there's a better way with managed identities. These are non-human identities tied to Azure resources that can securely access other resources without having to manage credentials. They're free, they work with anything that supports enter authentication, and they make Azure management easier. There are two types of managed identities, system assigned and user assigned. System assigned identities are created with the host pool and deleted when the host pool is removed. Super simple. User assigned identities are standalone, reusable across multiple host pools, and great for large environments to limit the number of managed identities or when extra permissions are required, like accessing SQL databases or multiple key vaults. Whichever you choose, the managed identity needs specific roles, including desktop virtual machine contributor for the image gallery, session host resource group, the virtual network, and the network security group, as well as key vault secret user permissions for secrets used during the deployment, like local admin passwords or domain join credentials. As mentioned, a key vault is required to store secrets used with the session host configuration. The key vault has to be configured to allow trusted Microsoft services to bypass the firewall and access configuration to enable Azure Resource Manager for template deployments. We'll walk through the configuration in the upcoming demo. Keep in mind, both session host configuration and managed identities for AVD are in public preview at the time of recording, so things may have changed slightly when you watch this. Coming up, we'll walk through creating a key vault, then a host pool with a system assigned managed identity. After that, we'll create a user assigned managed identity and then use it for a new host pool. And then we'll update an existing host pool to use managed identities. Links to all the docs and resources are in the description below. Let's jump into the Azure portal to get started. Here we are in the Azure portal. Let's start with creating a key vault. And you're welcome to use an existing key vault if you have one already. We need the key vault to store the local admin username and password and the domain join account and password if joining the session host to an Active Directory domain. Let's go to Key Vault and create a new Key Vault or skip this step and go to a Key Vault you're going to use. Keep in mind, there are a couple configuration settings that need to be applied. We'll cover those in a couple steps. Start by selecting your subscription and the resource group or create a new one. Give it a name. This example will use AVDKV Demo. Select the region, and this example will use the standard tier. This is a demo and it won't be needed for long. The days to retain the deleted vault will be set to seven and purge protection will be disabled. Go next to access configuration, leave it as role-based and select Azure Resource Manager for template deployments under resource access. This is important because it lets the deployment access the key vault. Go next to networking, leave it set to enable public access, and select Allow Access from Selected Networks. We have to manually add any networks that will access the key vault with this configuration. Add any networks that may need access. None for this example. We also need to select the option to allow trusted Microsoft services to bypass the firewall. And again, these settings are required so the deployment can access the key vault. Add tags as needed and go to Review and Create, and select Create to create the key vault. We'll give it a minute to finish. The video will pause until it's done. 
that finished, let's go to the resource. Here we are at the key vault. By default, even though we created the key vault, we don't have access to create secrets. We need to add those rights to our account. To do that, go to access control IAM, add a role assignment, search for key vault and select key vault administrator. By the way, this may not follow the theory of least privileges. The role is being used, so we have rights to add the secret for this demo. Go next to members and select the user who will get access to create the secrets, the account I'm logged in as for this example. Next, go to review and assign and select review and assign. That allows our account to add secrets to the key vault. Because we did enable the firewall, we do have to grant access to the device we're working on to the key vault. Let's go to settings, then networking. You can add a virtual network if you're working on that. From the firewall, I'm going to add my public IP address. Use a tool like What's My IP to get your public IP address. We'll apply. Next, we need to add our secrets. Go to objects, then secrets. This deployment example will need four secrets, the local computer username and the local computer password, the domain join username and the domain join password. Let's create our first secret. Go to generate import. The first one will be VM admin with the secret value of local admin. We have the option to see the secret value on the right. Click create. If we open the new secret, then open the version. There's an option to show the secret. This is helpful if you need to verify what was entered. Let's go back to secrets in the key vault. Repeat these steps to add the password for the VM admin account and the domain join account and password if using a Windows domain. The video will jump ahead while they're added. Okay, those username and passwords have been added to the key vault and we can use them in the next step. Don't forget to update the secret values in the key vault if any of those passwords change. Here we are in the Azure portal in host pools under Azure Virtual Desktop. Next, let's create a new host pool with a system assigned managed identity. Create a new host pool. Fill out the subscription, resource group, name, and location. This will not be a validation host pool and we'll leave the group type as desktop. And just to note, we will need to select an existing resource group in the next section. We can't use a new one that we create in this step because it won't be created until we run the deployment. So it's best to create a resource group for your session hosts beforehand. We want a pooled host pool. And here's where we select the option to use session host configurations. This is what lets Azure manage the creation of session host based on settings we define. And this is what needs a managed identity to create and manage those resources. We'll select yes to create session host configuration, set your load balancing settings, and then go to session hosts. We're letting AVD create and manage the session host, but we need to define the settings. It's like we're giving AVD a recipe that it'll use to create session hosts. Specify the number of session hosts to build, two for this example, and all these settings can be changed later. Provide the resource group for the session hosts. This can be different from the host pool if needed, and give it a name prefix. The prefix is the first part of the computer name, so it can only contain letters, numbers, and dashes. A dash with four alphanumeric characters is added to the end to create a unique computer name. Provide a location. This could be different from the host pool location. This example, we'll leave the next few items default and we'll move to image. Select an image 24H2 multi-user for this example. This is just a demo, so a B2AS V2 VM will be used. Let's leave the next couple as default and jump down to virtual network. Provide the virtual network, the subnet, in this example, we'll leave the network security group set to none. Select the domain join option. If we select enter ID, we just get an option to enroll the session host within Tune. We wouldn't need the domain ad credentials if we're using enter ID. This example, however, will join the session host to Active Directory. We need to specify the key vault and secret for the domain join account and password. These are in the same key vault for this example, but they could be in different key vaults. Select the domain join account and password key vault secret. You can specify the domain to join. If we have a multi-domain force, for example, we can also specify an organizational unit or OU. This example will specify both, but it's not required. And next we need to specify the local admin username and password key vault secret. We do that just like we did with the domain secrets. Go next to workspaces and select or add a workspace. Go next to management. Here's where we specify if we're using a user assigned or system assigned managed identity. 
For this example, we'll use a system assigned managed identity. A managed identity will be created and bound to the lifecycle of this host pool. Notice it outlines the permissions the managed identity will have. Add diagnostic settings and tags as needed and go to review and create. Once validation passes, click create. This will take some time to finish. The video will pause here until it's done. We're back and the host pool has been created. Now, if we go to the resource group and access control, open role assignments and search for the managed identity, it will be the same name as the host pool. It shows that the managed identity has the desktop virtualization virtual machine contributor role scoped at the resource group. This is an example of how the managed identity gets rights to manage the host pool resources. That's how we use system assigned managed identities with an AVD host pool. What about user assigned managed identities? We need to create that managed identity before we can use it. To create that, go to Azure and search for managed identities. From managed identities, create a new managed identity. Select the subscription and provide a resource group. Give it a name and select the region. We can isolate the managed identity to that region with an isolation scope. With that enabled, the managed identity won't be able to access resources in other regions. This example, we'll leave it set to none so we can use it for host pools across multiple regions. Add tags as needed and go to review and create. Once there, click create to create the user assigned managed identity. That's been created. Now let's go back to managed identities. And there's our newly created user assigned managed identity. We'll use that coming up next. Next up, we'll create a host pool with a user assigned managed identity. Let's go to host pools and AVD and add a new host pool. Everything up to management is similar to what we filled out before. Be sure to select pooled host pool and yes at create session host configuration. Configure the session host and workplace settings for your environment. The video will skip filling out the rest and jump to management. Once at management, we'll change the type of managed identity to use existing user assigned managed identity. Select the subscription and resource group of the user assigned managed identity we created and then select it from the list. At this point, we haven't given the managed identity any rights to Azure resources. We can do that by checking the create role assignment based on session host configuration box. This will add the required role assignments for session host configuration. And it provides a list of those role assignments. Because it's user assigned, we can use the same identity for multiple host pools. It's not bound to the life cycle of any one host pool. And we will have to remove it manually if it's no longer in use. Add diagnostic settings and tags as needed and go to review and create. Once validation passes, click create. This will take a few minutes to finish. The video will pause here until it's done. The deployment finished, and now we have a host pool created with session host configuration and using a user assigned managed identity. We can modify the managed identity by going into the host pool, settings, and then identity. Here's the one we just created. We could change it to system assigned if needed. Let's go to a host pool that's not using a managed identity. From identity, we have the option to assign a managed identity. From here, we can select a system or user assigned identity. If we select user assign, we have to select an existing identity. That is how to use a system and user assigned managed identity with AVD session host configuration. That's how you use managed identities with AVD session host configuration. If this helped, please hit like and subscribe and thanks for watching.